Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Uh, this is a PIR sensor relay driver kit. Uh, once uh, the PIR sensor act, uh, detects uh, human presence uh, via the uh, infrared uh, signature coming off the human body, it turns on the relay for 1 minute and 20 seconds. And what happens is that's an internal timer. Every time the PIR sensor detects you, it resets that timer. So if I'm working around it, I'll continually set it off so the relay will stay on. And then through, well, 1 minute and 20 seconds after I leave the room, the relay will turn off. And it will continue to scan for a human presence. So basically, you can use the relay as a powerful switch, just an on-off switch essentially, uh, to control uh, a lamp per se. So, I, I, uh, for example, so I can walk in the room, lamp turns on, it stays on until 120 seconds after, or 1 minute and 20 seconds after I leave the room, at which it turns off. So it's kind of a power saving device. This isn't a very original idea. Actually, at work, whenever I walk into the lab, uh, there is a high tech system that turns on the light based on the human presence, and after it leaves, after you leave, uh, it turns off. So I've seen these actually all over the place. I actually saw something similar to it on the office. Anyway, uh, it's fairly easy to put together. It comes with a uh, already assembled PIR module. You assemble the driver board, the the main board, and as well, it comes with a nine volt adapter, so you can plug it in. So everything you need right here can be, it will be uh, available at engineeringshock.com and electroniclessons.com. We'll run a test as soon as we build one, but we're going to build one from scratch. Let's see what comes with the kit, minus this, because it's going to take up too much room in the picture, but it does come with one. So the kit does come with a 9 volt adapter, but it's not seen here. Custom printed circuit board, a 10K ohm resistor, a 470 ohm resistor, a 3 millimeter red LED, a single uh, 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, 3-pin header, uh, diode, a 3-pin uh, cable to interface between the board and the PIR sensor, 3-pin terminal block, 2N2222 NPN transistor, 7805 5-volt regulator, DC power jack, uh, an electrolytic 100 microfarad uh, capacitor, a programmed microcontroller and socket dip, uh, 5 volt relay and PIR module. So we'll get to the PIR module last. First we're going to build up board and the first thing we want to do is we want to place our resistors. Now R1 is right, right here labeled 470R R1. 470R means 470 ohms. Uh, R2 is labeled 10K R2. 10K meaning 10,000 ohm resistor so make sure you place the uh, two resistors in the relative uh, placeholders. Now, after we solder those into place, we will solder in our capacitors and our diodes. Now we want to uh, place our capacitors. Our capacitors. So uh, the, you'll notice the 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor has a long lead and a short lead. Long lead is positive, short lead is negative. On the footprint, C3 labeled C3100U for 100 micro has a little tiny plus sign on the bottom pin from this perspective, just to the left of the bottom pin. You probably can't see it from here, but on the board, plus sign, lower pin from this perspective. Make sure that your long lead, your positive lead, goes in the uh, lower hole here with the plus sign directly to the left of it, and that your short lead goes in the top hole from this perspective. Your 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor goes in the C1 slot labeled C1 0.1U for 0 0.1 micro. Uh, they are not polarized. You can place it in either way. It doesn't matter. But note, if you do place the uh, electrolytic backwards and you power it up, you'll pop it. And that won't be good for anybody. Your diode has a white stripe on, on one side and black on the other. And the footprint has a white stripe on the left side from this perspective and nothing on the other side. The white stripe is an indicator of negative or cathode, and the uh, black side is, is positive, anode. So uh, place from a bird's eye view, make sure that the white stripe on one side of the diode is facing the left pin of the, of the D1 uh, footprint. There is a, as I said, a white uh, stripe on the left pin here. So bird's eye view, make sure that they line up. Uh, if you place that backwards, as soon as the relay is activated, it will short circuit the uh, device. Relay will, will turn off, and your your circuit will reset. So make sure that 
the white stripes are lined up from a bird's eye view. The LED uh, has a long lead and a short lead, like the ellipsolytic. The long lead is positive, short lead is negative, and it goes into the LED1 slot. Uh, positive goes in the top pin, so long pin on the top here from this perspective, short pin in the lower in the lower slot, with right next to the LED1 uh, indicator. So, positive on top, long on top, short on bottom from this perspective. So, out of those into place, next we will do our transistor, our 3-pin header, and our uh, DC power jack. The DC power jack only really fits in one way. There are three pins, and they're placed. it's placed right here. Don't apply too much heat. You don't need a full rounded solder joint. Just make sure that the uh, each pin is connected via solder to the three uh, pads on the PCB. The three-pin terminal, uh, three-pin uh, header. The smaller pin side goes into the board, so the longer pin side is facing up, like so. Make sure that there are no shorts. The 2N2222 NPN transistor has a flat side, which has writing on it, and it has a curved side. The footprint labeled T12N2222 has a flat side and a curved side. When you place the components in, make sure that from a bird's eye view, the flat side of the transistor uh, is facing the uh, flat side of the footprint, in this case the bottom, and then the curved side is facing the curved side of the footprint. If you turn that around, your relay will not activate. So make sure you get that right the first time. After you solder those into place, make sure not to get any shorts, especially on the transistor. We will solder in our socket our 7805 and our terminal block. Changing uh, perspectives here, uh, as you can see I've turned the uh, printed circuit board around again. Anyway, so as you can see, well, first of all we'll talk about the socket. The socket has a notch on the right hand side of the footprint, a little notch right next to the IC1 label. It's labeled IC1. There's a little notch. On the socket there's a notch on the right hand side. On the uh, I see there is a notch on the right hand side. The reason for that notch is that we have is an orientation thing. We want to make sure that from our perspective the socket is placed with a notch on the right hand side from a bird's eye view uh, relative to the uh, printed circuit board and that when we place in our IC, our pr uh, programmable microcontroller, that the notch is facing from a bird's eye view the right hand side here uh, with with the notch on the on the footprint. If you don't line up that notch and you power it on with the IC reversed, you'll fry it instantly. So be very, very careful. 7805 has a black side with writing on it, and it has a ground side with uh, just like a whitish gray. The footprint right here is labeled 7805 and has a white stripe on the back. We want to make sure that from this perspective that the stripe and the back of the regulator are lined up. So from this perspective, make sure that the black side is facing the power jack and that the ground side is facing the microcontroller like so. Your terminal block has three terminals on one side plastic on the other. Make sure that the terminals are facing out and the plastic is facing the, the printed circuit board. These are so you can wire in your, your uh, AC device, whatever you choose to use. So terminals are facing out. So out of those all, all in place, check for shorts. Make absolutely sure that you get the the uh, the uh, the IC, the microchip, placed in the correct orientation. Uh, healthy amount of solder on the each of the three terminal block leads. So we'll do the relay next, and then we'll talk about the PIR sensor. The relay, relay only fits in one way. Three pins on the left, two pins on the right. Turn it around, pops right, should pop right in. Make sure it's flush to the board. Uh, make sure that there's a healthy amount of solder that should, uh, on the pads. Solder that into place. Now the board will be done once you are done that. Next we have to talk about the PIR sensor. Okay, so this is where you have to pay extremely close attention. The three pins on the board are labeled 1, 2, and 3. On the left side it's labeled VCC, SIG, and ground. So VCC, SIG, and G, and D. On the, on the PIR sensor, from this perspective, the left pin is labeled 5 volts. You have to look closely on the board. The middle pin is labeled right here, out, out, and the right pin from this perspective is labeled G and D for ground. You want to take your included uh, three-pin connector. Don't worry about color code. Just make sure that each goes in the following orientation. Uh, 
place one pin on VCC on the main board. Connect the other side of that pin to five, the 5 volt pin on the PIR sensor. L left pin labeled 5 volts. The middle pin on the board, pin 2, labeled SIG for signal, should be connected through another wire to the middle pin on the PIR sensor from this perspective, labeled OUT. And lastly, the third pin, pin 3, labeled GND on the board, should be connected to the GND pin on the uh, PIR sensor, which is the rightmost pin. Don't mix those up. If you place VCC, if you, if you reverse anything there, you'll easily fry the PIR sensor. So what this is doing is it's providing 5 volts from the main board regulated to the PIR sensor. It's interfacing both of the grounds, which is necessary, and it's taking the output signal from the PIR and feeding it into the main board, in, which talks to the microcontroller. So it's a matter of feedback. Make absolutely sure that you don't screw that up. VCC to 5 volts. SIG to, to out. GND ground to GND ground. Again, it is labeled on the board here. You have to look closely, though. Anyway, after we're done that, we can plug it in and give it a test. One thing I forgot to mention, from this perspective, you want to actually tune these you, uh, potentiometers, variable resistors. Now, you can play around with them for, to, make for sensi to, to adjust sensitivity, but I suggest taking your screwdriver, turning both of them all the way left. all the way left. Don't put too much pressure, just gently place it, make sure that it, both are placed all the way left. Now, for a test, what I'm going to do is I'm going to aim this PIR sensor, this is the Fresnel cap, which actually filters out ambient light, and I'm going to aim it at the wall, just for test purposes, so I can kind of give you a demonstration. So the relay turned off about one, one minute and 20 seconds later, so now it's in scanning mode. Uh, and the re it will not activate until it actually sees a human body or even, I'd say, even a large dog. So I'm going to put my hand in front of it. Very sensitive. Now, so the counter is going, counting down from essentially 120 seconds, or 1 minute and 20 seconds. So what happens if I do this? Oh, I just reset the timer. Oh, I just reset the timer. Oh, I just reset the timer. Now, the output isn't, isn't the output of the PIR sensor isn't literally high when it detects me and low when it doesn't. Uh, they're a little bit finicky, so I might go like this, and the output might stay high for a couple seconds, and as long as it's high, it's resetting that timer. So when the output goes low, it starts the timer down again. So uh, in a minute and 20 seconds, it should go, it should turn off, no problem. Now if I keep working in the area, you know, I keep, uh, if I have the sensor within my, you know, looking in my general direction, the relay won't turn off. It will turn off when I leave the room. Anyway, I hope that makes sense to you. I hope you followed along. I hope you liked the demonstration. Uh, again, if you find that you get some false triggers, just tweak the uh, the, res the variable resistors on the PIR sensor. It should It's pretty easy to tune. So just follow these steps provided. Shouldn't have any problem. Thanks for watching, everyone. I appreciate it.